Over the last month, we have been working behind the scenes on a big project. I am so excited about it. It's like a dream come true. It is a new garden shed, and this is no ordinary garden shed. We finished both the outside and the inside of this shed, and not only is it beautiful, it's also going to solve a huge problem that we've had with our garden from the beginning and be very functional. But before I go into the story of why and how we built this, I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Homestead Supplier. Three years ago, we bought the property that we currently live on. The land had no water, no electricity, and no house. So before we added anything else, the first thing we built was our garden. That was where my priority was. We later decided where we wanted the house to go, and luckily it ended up being fairly close to the garden. It was about 150 feet from the closest corner of the garden to the house. So it's definitely close enough to walk to, but after years of gardening here, I've realized one major problem with having a very large garden and the house being in its current location. All of my tools were stored in the garage or we were also storing some of our tools in the barn. So this made it that anytime I went out to the garden, I needed to haul all my tools by hand or with a wheelbarrow. Then if I forgot a tool, which definitely happened quite a bit, I had to walk back to the house, then back to the garden. And walking is awesome, but when you wanna get projects done in the garden, or for me, I really wanted to focus all of my energy into what I was doing in the garden, walking back and forth just really added up. After a while, I started to get really tired of this. And especially this year with being pregnant, it, I just said, forget it. I am just going to leave them out in my garden or in my caterpillar tunnel. So I loved the convenience of having my tools out in my garden. But when I left them outside and exposed them to all of the elements, all of my tools got weathered so fast. Having invested so much money in all of my tools and how important they are to my garden, I was really frustrated at myself for leaving them out like that. So I decided I need a solution for this. I need to solve this problem, take care of my tools better, and I need to have them closer so I can save a bunch of time. So Cam and I discussed all kinds of different possible solutions, but in the end, we decided a shed located inside the garden would be the ideal way to solve the tool problem. Cam and Kian are working on digging post holes because we are moving this entire span, back span of our garden. How long is that, Cam? It's 220 feet, I think. We're moving this back 10 feet because we need some space for a new special project that we're doing. That, tie that chain back on. Okay, like a couple more. So Cam got the fence hall moved and now we're on to the next step, which is to string out the line for where the shed is gonna go. And the reason that we moved the whole fence this way is because I knew I wanted it to go on this side of the garden. This is the north side of the garden, which means the shed is not gonna shade anything else during the day. So we're gonna prep the foundation. Becky's gonna tell me where to lay it out because she has to have it in her spot. I would inevitably do it wrong. So she's gonna tell me where to lay it out and I'll lay it out for her. It's a 12 by 20 shed. I'm just marking the corners. So now I'm just marking the perimeter so that I can, so I can dig the piers. We spent a long time researching how best to build a strong foundation and settled on doing piers, concrete piers, and attaching the floor to them. So this foundation may seem like overkill for a shed, but we really liked the idea of having the shed actually attached to the ground rather than just setting it on top of concrete footers. Travel it all the way, yep, can go on her end, not in the middle. When we started on the foundation for the shed, it was the end of April, and due to the timing, sometimes we were working on it in the rain because the whole goal was to have this project finished and done before the baby came in June. And since I was super pregnant and also managing the garden, 
I took on more of a project manager role, which is why you don't see me here. I'm behind the camera and I left all of the manual labor to Cam and the kids. What are we doing today, Keegan? <laughs> okay, take two. Okay, Keegan, what are we doing today? Um, so there's these plywood sheets right here that we're gonna put on here so that we can walk on it. Okay, so plywood sheets on here so we can walk on it. We're we're finishing the floor of our shed. That's what we're doing today. Build a treehouse this big. You wanna build a treehouse this big? Okay. Well. By early May, the foundation was in and we were wrapping up the floor. The next step was actually building the shed. And that brings us to our partner for this video, Homestead Supplier. They have a huge selection of shed kits available and we are totally sold on this time-saving option, especially after putting it together. It was so fast. So we chose the Easy Fit Amish Riverside Shed in the 12 by 20 foot size. The entire shed was delivered on just a couple of pallets and we had them bring a forklift because our home and garden are not easy to get to. So it was good that they had that option so we could drop it off right next to the shed. Putting together the shed was by far the quickest part of the whole building process. Cam and the kids had the walls assembled in one day and then the roof assembled by the next day. And I'm pretty sure if Cam had tried to build the shed from scratch, it would have taken him the entire summer. And I am not exaggerating. So by using the shed kit, it was a huge time saver and we still got to customize it a bunch by choosing our own paint colors. And they also have lots of add-on options you can choose from. We're finished with the build part as far as what comes in the kit. So anything extra now is what we're going to layer on, uh, which will be the roof and the paint and then finish out the kind of trim out the inside. So we're it's that's kind of the fun part now. I wanted to mimic our house with the paint. So we're just going to go with white paint and we're going to do a color on the door. I decided on red for the door. Cam is going to spray paint to make it all easy. Then even the roof panels will match our house because we had some extra from when we built. Save those for a good reason. I didn't know what, but this is, this is it. <laughs> Should I paint with the green, mom? A mess. I knew early on when we decided to build a shed as a tool storage place that I wanted to finish out some of the inside. Our previous residence had a small shed and it was always extremely hot in the summer because it wasn't insulated. So that was definitely an add-on that I wanted to do so that the shed would be a comfortable place that I wanted to be. And the second reason that we decided to put some effort into finishing out the inside is because for me personally, when I have something that looks nice and finished, I am so much more motivated to keep that space clean and tidy and organized. And the whole purpose of the shed was to keep the tools out of the weather and to save time. And I'll save time by having the tools closer to me and I'll also save time because if I'm organized, I'll actually be able to know where specific tools are. I'm putting this cupola together down here because it'll be easier than doing it at the peak. And then this guy. Yay. I'm halfway done with the metal roof and it's time to put the cupola on or the weather vane 
whatever you want to call this thing. Metal roofs, once they're on, I try to avoid getting back on them. So since while I still have felt and traction, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on. Forgot the most important part, the chicken. So this cute little guy decided to come four weeks early <laughs> for us. We fully intended on having the shed project finished before he came, but that obviously did not happen. And so we're we're getting really close to finally wrapping that up. Cameron had finished up the ship lap and originally I had it just up to like the center strip here and then we had left the the rest of it undone and I changed my mind and I had him finish that. So I've been adding a few projects that have been extending the length of this project too. Now that that's all done, he also added insulation to the top of the shed which we were just gonna add like later after we were done with this video, but we decided let's just finish it now because part of the reason for that was I want I wanted Cam to spray the whole interior white and even the insulation, it's all open and the ceiling just has more of an unfinished look, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. so Becky's not allowed to add anything else to this. I'm gonna finish it and finish it yeah. and then she's going to enjoy it. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs>
We finished hanging this up and realized that it's slightly off level, so Cruz is going to grab a level so we can make it straight. Got an update on this thing. It wasn't level because some of the wood pieces are off. So it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Cruz is saying it wasn't his fault. fault. Cam just it didn't make it like super exact, so it might just be slightly off. Welcome to the garden shed. I'm going to give you guys a little tour of everything and now that it's all finished. Come on inside. We're going to start over on this side over here. Cam built me this custom rack for my gritter tool. It has different sizes based on what spacing you want in the garden. And then over here, this goes with the gritter. And then I have the rest of my tools are all along this wall. Something that I want to do that I haven't done yet is I do want to outline these tools as well with some kind of marker or pencil or something so that I know exactly which tool goes where. It's a little bit more clear on this wall just because of different sizing, but I'd love for anybody who walked in here or used a tool to know exactly where it went, especially the kids who helped me a lot. This has been done for maybe two days and we use some of the tools today and already my kids use the tools and they put them back. So already it's been worth it because everybody knows that the tools have a place. And for myself too, it's so nice to be able to just walk really close. I don't have to walk to the house anymore. It's just right here, super close, saves me a ton of time and you can just walk right in. I know where every single tool is. So it's so functional I'm super, excited about it, really glad to be able to have this already. It's just been like like a dream. Here we did this pegboard and I painted it with chalkboard paint. And then I just used a chalkboard marker to outline all of my hand tools. So you can really easily see, same kind of thing, where each thing goes and everybody can put it all back. And you can see I have a lot of extra space over here. I do have a few more things that I wanna hang up here, but Basically, this will give me some room to grow my hand tool collection or whatever I want. And then it's nice that it's chalkboard paint so that I can just easily erase any of the marks that I have and then put a new tool there or rearrange or whatever I want to do, I can do. So that's really nice. I just have some just random storage up here. You can kind of see what those things are. And then down here, all of the things that I really want in close proximity, but that are better to have inside are all in the shed. So over on this side, I have these four trash bins. They don't actually hold trash. They are for storage. So I have my hats in one, gloves in another, knee pads in one, and then the last one just has some hanging hardware for the tools. So when I want to add additional tools, or I actually have a few that I, we still haven't hung up yet, it's right here as well. And I s still would like to like label these um, metal trash cans. I just haven't done that yet. So back behind me on this side, the Jang Cedar. This is not where it's gonna stay. We just haven't quite figured out a spot for it yet. And then my wheel hoe. Last but not least, the BCS is here. Also super nice. We are storing the BCS in the barn because the barn is covered, although it's not 
super waterproof because it's an old barn. But it's really nice to have it here because it's closer to everything and it'll be easy to use. We're waiting on another implement that we're getting a flail mower pretty soon. So will also be nice to have that here. And then I have my earthway cedar here. One thing that I haven't talked about yet is the floors in here. I spent a long time researching like, what do I do for floors inside of a shed and how can I keep it more clean? And so I stumbled on these garage like floor mats and that is what we ended up getting. So it, it can take, if there's an oil spill from the BCS, it can take that and it'll be really easy to clean up. The only thing about these floors that surprised me when we got them is that they are really shiny. I wasn't expecting that. I thought they were a little bit more matte. So it does show the dirt a little bit, but it's not a big deal. We were able to get a good deal on this particular flooring. So overall, I'm super happy with the entire shed. I'm so glad we did it. It's going to be super functional and save a bunch of time. One last thing I... <laughs> hey God. One last thing I forgot to mention, the lights out here, they are solar lights. We don't have electricity out here, so we just found some solar lights at a local hardware store and hooked them up.